Hi everyone and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for Free with Miss Estrick. In this video we're going to be going through how DNA fragments are created for gene technology. If you are new here then please click the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all the latest videos and if you do find this helpful then give it a thumbs up. So just have an overview of where this fits into the A-Level topic. The topic eight for AQA, which is part of the gene technology, has three key sections, creating the DNA fragments, genetic fingerprinting, and genetic screening, counseling, and locating genes. So for this section, we can split it into gel electrophoresis to help screen and identify if someone has particular genes. Once you've then screened, you can give the counseling and personalized medicines. Genetic fingerprinting, this is used in forensic science, medical diagnosis for plant and animal breeding and genetic testing such as paternity tests. Now what we're focusing on today is the creating DNA fragments and that is three mechanisms, the gene machine, reverse transcriptase and restriction endonucleases. So that's what we're going through today but what that links to is in order to be able to do genetic modification or engineering, you have to have the gene of interest. You then need to clone that gene so you have lots and lots of copies. And then once you've got those copies, you can insert it into um, the organism. So for example, with human insulin, you'd have to isolate the human insulin gene, then amplify so you have lots of copies, then we'd be inserting it into the bacterial plasmid so the bacteria can make lots of that protein, the human insulin. So what we're focusing on today is just this section, but in future videos, there will be all of the other parts of this topic. So let's have a look then at how we'd make these DNA fragments. So an overview then of just this section of recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant is meaning you're recombining, so you're putting together two different organisms' DNA. And in order to do that, we need to have the DNA of interest. Why this might be done is for industrial processes and in particular medical treatments. So I gave the example of human insulin. The first step is you have to isolate the gene of interest. So isolating or creating DNA fragments is meaning you need to be able to get that gene that you want to be able to insert into another organism's DNA. And there's three methods of how you could do this. Using the enzyme reverse transcriptase, that would then be performing the process reverse transcription. Using the enzymes restriction endonucleases to cut up DNA. And then the most modern version is the gene machine. So if we start with reverse transcription, now this is using the enzyme reverse transcriptase. And that enzyme can make DNA copies from mRNA. It naturally occurs in viruses such as HIV. So a cell that naturally produces the protein of interest is selected. So if we use that human insulin gene again, we know that the um, pancreatic cells will be producing that particular protein. So you would be taking one of the cells, and we know that these cells must make large amounts of the mRNA for that protein, seeing as you have lots of the protein in those cells. So the reverse transcriptase enzyme will then join DNA nucleotides together, um, which are complementary to the bases on the mRNA sequence. So it'd be using, we'd have to extract the mRNA from this cell. Then we can have free DNA nucleotides. They'll align to their complementary bases on the mRNA sequence. And then we would have those joined together, those DNA nucleotides, to make a single strand of DNA. And we call this cDNA, the C standing for complementary. So if we just go over to the diagram, that's what we can see in this very first stage. We've got mRNA that would have been removed from the cell. You would then mix that mRNA with complementary DNA nucleotides and add the enzyme reverse transcriptase and that will enable reverse transcription to occur, which means that the DNA nucleotides will align opposite their complementary bases on mRNA, and then this enzyme will catalyze the joining together of those nucleotides. Now at this stage, that's just single-stranded. 
If you do need it to be double stranded, you would then add more DNA nucleotides and the enzyme DNA polymerase to join together those nucleotides to make a second chain. And that's what we can see here. We've now got double stranded DNA. The last step in this diagram is actually going to be in a different video, and that is where you can use PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, to then make lots and lots of copies of that fragment of DNA that you've made. So this is an example of cloning to amplify your sample. So reverse transcription then, the main advantage is because you are using mRNA, the introns are already removed. So then when you make this complementary DNA from the mRNA, you are making DNA which already has introns removed. And that's incredibly important if you are doing genetic engineering involving prokaryotic cells like bacteria, because prokaryotic cells do not have the ability to remove introns. So if you've got DNA that's intron free, that will be really advantageous. So option two is restriction endonucleases. So these are enzymes which cut DNA and they naturally occur in bacteria as a defense mechanism. So if there was foreign DNA inside of bacteria, they have these restriction endonucleases to cut up the DNA so it shouldn't be able to replicate and cause harm to the bacteria. So there's many different types of restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases and each of these enzymes has a slightly different shape active site to be complementary to a whole different range of DNA base sequences. And whichever particular sequence the restriction endonuclease is complementary to, that is where it will cut the DNA. And we call that the recognition sequence or the recognition site. So where it is able to cut is the recognition site. So some enzymes have the ability to cut what we call a blunt end. So they'll cut horizontally down, sorry, vertically down this DNA molecule. Whereas some cut at palindromic sequences, so you get a staggered cut. And where we say palindromic, what we mean is when you see the bases, they read the same forwards as they do backwards. So for example, here we've got A, G, C, T, T, forwards and backwards on this chain, A, G, C, C, A, G, C, T, T. So it's palindromic. So the most useful restriction endonucleases are the ones that are able to cut at these palindromic um, recognition sites because if they do cut jagged like this or staggered, you end up with two pieces of DNA which have exposed bases. And we call that a sticky end. And that's because these exposed bases can now be aligned next to exposed bases for, of the organism for which you want to insert it into. So it makes it easier to join the DNA when you're adding it into the next sample. So lastly, the gene machine. So this is the most modern method, and this is done in the lab using a computerized machine. So what the scientists would have to do is, whichever protein they want to make, they would have to examine it first of all to identify what the amino acid sequence is in the primary structure of the protein. And then using that amino acid sequence, They'll then have to work out what the mRNA sequence is that coded for those amino acids. And from that, they can then work out the DNA sequence. So there is a bit of work to do before you can start on this process. But once they have that information, it's incredibly quick, automated and easy. So once you have that information, you then type in the DNA sequence into the computer. It will then check that the sequence you're putting in isn't going to make a protein which could be a um, hazard to human safety. So they're making sure you're not going to make some protein that could be potentially really harmful. Once they've checked and it is safe and ethical to produce, then the computer can create small sections of overlapping single strands of DNA nucleotides. And we call these oligonucleotides. Now, whatever you see the word or phrase oligo in front of something, that does mean a really small section. So oligonucleotides are small sections of nucleotides joined together. 
So once you've got lots of small sections or oligonucleotides, those can then all be stuck together and joined up to create the entire fragment of DNA for the gene. Then that creates one copy. If you want to make lots of copies, you'd use the polymerase chain reaction to then create lots and lots of copies of that gene. So it's once you've done this first stage of identifying the DNA sequence, then it's very quick, it's very accurate, because you are designing and entering the exact sequence you want. You can design it so it's intron free. You can design it so it has sticky ends. So it's a really, really useful new technology, the gene machine. So just in summary then, to look at how um, these link together in terms of pros and cons, reverse transcriptase is the enzyme that would be used for reverse transcription. Main advantage is we said you'd need to use a cell which creates the protein naturally. Um, and if you do that, there'll be lots of mRNA present in that cell. So you have lots of copies of mRNA to be able to make lots of copies of the complementary DNA, which will be your DNA fragment. Disadvantage though is it does have more steps than the other two. So it can be more time consuming and technically it's more difficult as well. Restriction endonuclease, these are useful because you can select the enzymes that will cut at palindromic recognition sites to give you these staggered cuts or these sticky ends. And that then makes it easier to insert in the DNA fragment when you are creating your recombinant DNA. Downside of this method though is because you are cutting the original DNA, it will still contain introns. And if you're inserting your DNA fragment into a bacterium, that would be an issue. So you'd then have to have an extra step to remove those introns. Lastly then, the gene machine. So this is very, very quick, very accurate. You can design the exact DNA fragment you want, add sticky ends, you can add DNA probes as labels, um, and much, much more, it won't have introns. Downside though is you do need to invest the time beforehand to identify the exact sequence of amino acids and therefore the sequence of DNA bases. So that's it for the creating DNA fragment stage of recombinant DNA technologies. You just need to be aware of those are your three techniques of how you can isolate the gene that you want to um, clone and then insert into another organism. So it's those three techniques, those are the pros and cons. So that's it for the DNA fragments lesson. Head over to MissEstrick.com if you do want to have a go at some practice questions linked to that. If you have found this helpful today, then please give it a thumbs up.